Hey there cons, Misconduct here. For the first section of our tutorial, we're going to be talking about my video and control settings. So if you already have something that works for you, I'm not here to recommend you change that. But if you want to try to replicate what I do with the mouse and keyboard, or if you're just curious, then this is the video for you. So under controls, I'm using the default Arma 3 controls for virtually everything with a few minor changes. Uh, cyclic forward under helicopter movement is by default W up and mouse down and cyclic backward is S down and mouse up. So I've reversed those because for me it makes more sense to tip the helicopter forward by pushing forward and tip the helicopter backward by pulling back. That's just how it makes sense to me. Uh, but again, do however you intuitively feel you should um, and that's going to work for you. I've disabled auto hover altogether. I probably didn't need to disable auto hover off, but I just think you'll be a better pilot if you don't pay any attention to auto hover at all. Uh, it will be a scroll wheel option for you anyway, but most importantly is you don't want to accidentally hit auto hover because that's gonna push you straight up into the air where you're gonna pause for a few seconds and that'll make you vulnerable. And on the note of buttons that you don't wanna press by accident, I've disabled eject, which is by default double tap V. Um, that's an awful thing too, to accidentally eject from your Pawnee when you were trying to change the rate of fire. That's uh, bad news, so disable that one as well. And again, that will also be a scroll wheel option for you. For mouse, I keep my sensitivity in the 10% range. That for me translates large sweeping movements with the mouse into fine-tuned movements with the helicopter and I'll still have WASD keys to do my large or emergency maneuvers with the helicopter. Uh, on the note of the mouse, I'm using a Logitech G600 that has a keypad on the side and that allows me to map my default anti-torque left and right. Q and E are mapped onto there. I also have map on there, which allows me to pop in and out of the map very quickly, which is very useful for piloting because you don't want to spend a lot of time looking at the map while you're flying. I have numpad enter mapped onto there as well, so I can switch between first and third person very easily. And I also have scroll wheel option select between my anti-torques here and that allows me to obviously choose my scroll wheel options all very easily and relieving my left hand of all those issues and dividing them up and putting them onto my right hand gives me sort of a more, a more balanced mouse and keyboard setup. Under video settings, I have everything on ultra or high or very high if I can. I'm running an i5-6600K and I'm running Arma from a solid state drive. I'm, my GPU is a GTX 1060, and uh, all of that works out very well for me. I get uh, pretty good frames, and um, the, uh, the overall setup seems to be capable of handling most of Arma 3 scenarios. Uh, overall and object distance settings are really going to matter more to the game mode that you're playing. So with King of the Hill, you're going to have player menu options. Um, if you're doing transport pilot with a hummingbird, which is what I mostly do, um, you might as well keep your uh, view distance really low to try to keep your FPS really high. And you might need to raise that for Pawnee use or any kind of long distance uh, you so you're going to want to change that as you see fit, but might as well keep it low if you have the ability to do so. For display settings, uh, I really don't change anything on this page. Um, so really just have a look if it matters to you. And uh, under AA and PP settings, I don't change much either. I've bumped up the saturation somewhat recently, so you're going to see a little bit more color and... Uh, and life, if you will, in my newer videos, but we still have a bunch of old footage to go through. So uh, only in this tutorial series are you going to see, and anytime soon, are you going to see higher saturation levels. Um, the only thing that I would mention from here is um, if you're having that issue with your character's uh, 
border on their on your screen being blurry that is your radial blur you can drag that all the way down to zero and that will no longer be a problem and uh, on the note of random little glitchy things that happen uh, if you're ever having the zoom in and out forced free look issue that is simply solved by getting into the back seat of your vehicle and then back into the pilot or driver's seat and that should at least temporarily fix that problem those are the video and control settings I have for you, and I will see you guys on the next segment.